Hi, my name is Dale. I'm one of the pastors here at Redeemer Bible Church. Today is Tuesday. Thank you for joining me. We are in uh, 2 Corinthians chapter 12 today, a pretty famous chapter, um, uh, one that's quoted often uh, when Paul talks about the thorn that he has in his flesh. So if you would open up your Bible today, the first thing I want to do is uh, give you a brief outline, or a simple outline, I should say, of, uh, of this chapter. And uh, I know some of you like to take notes on that. So um, here is how I broke down the outline on this. So uh, verses one through six, um, I titled, Paul Received Revelations from Jesus Directly. Paul received revelations from Jesus directly, verses one through six. Um, part two would be verses seven through 10, and that's Paul's thorn. Paul's thorn, and we're going to focus on that today. And then uh, section three would be the apostolic signs. That would be verses 11 to 18. And then finally, Paul's courage in dealing with sin. So the thing that, the thing to really, um, really to remember as we're going through 2 Corinthians is that Paul is taking um, the Corinthians out to the proverbial woodshed the theological woodshed on this, uh, or in this book. Um, they, um, they, they're questioning his character. They're questioning his integrity. They're questioning the, the reality if he was an apostle or not. They're calling him a liar, which we find out in this, this portion here. And so this is Paul uh, responding to that. And um, so that's why yesterday he was talking about boasting versus I don't need to boast, but I could boast if I wanted to. And he goes on to start the, today's chapter with that, that if I must go on boasting, um, even though I don't need to, nothing will be gained by it, um, I'm going to boast in this. And he talks about the revelations that he received directly from Jesus, being called up into the third heaven and uh, having audience with the Lord, hearing things that he could never even share with us um, because it's forbidden. So uh, Paul, again, there just saying like, guys, I, I am a, an apostle of the Lord Jesus Christ. I have authority to speak on his behalf. And the whole crux, especially this part, last part of the letter, is who are you to question that? Why are you believing these false teachers over me? I'm the real deal. They are false teachers. So that's really the crux as we are kind of kind of today and the tomorrow land the plane on this letter. Um, Paul really is trying to drive that home to them. But one thing I want to talk about today is that this thorn that was given to Paul after his time in the third heaven, um, that the Lord granted through the ministry of Satan, so this is more evidence of what we learn in Job, even, that, that Satan doesn't do anything without God's permission. So after this experience of being in the third heaven, Paul is given a thorn um, by Satan, okay, as a messenger of Satan. So I want to I look at that passage, see what Paul says about that, and then think through it with you. So here, here's what Paul says. I'm going to start in verse chapter 7. So to keep me from being, or from becoming, I should say, so to keep me from becoming conceited because of the surpassing greatness of these revelations. So I just, I just learned some things. Like I know more than you do. I know what's coming. I know more about God than you do. And being puffed up in that, right? Knowledge puffs up, right? So instead of being puffed up in that, what, what does the Lord or to, to, to make sure that Paul's not tempted to be puffed up, what does the Lord do? He gives a thorn. So he says, A thorn was given me in the flesh, a messenger of Satan to harass me, to keep me from becoming conceited. So even if I wanted to become conceited, this thorn was given to me to make sure that I would not become conceited. And here's what Paul says. Three times I pleaded with the Lord. That word, that is a begging. He begged God about this and, he, and that it would leave him. 
But in verse 9, he says this, but he said to me, now listen, this is in quotes. This is a direct quote from Jesus Christ. Paul has an audience with Jesus, thus confirming his apostleship, by the way. Jesus says this, my grace is sufficient for you, for my power is made perfect in weakness. Therefore, I will boast all the more gladly of my weakness so that the power of Christ may rest upon me. Now, <clears throat> Paul didn't have to share that with the Corinthians, but he did. And the point, the point he's trying to share is that kind of, uh, this is definitely connected to the boasting part. Paul is saying, listen, I'm not going to boast in anything but Christ Jesus. I'm not going to boast in anything other than Christ, though I could. I could, but God gave me a thorn to make sure that I don't become puffed up, that I don't become conceited to the point of really telling you what I think about you, Corinthians. God uses a thorn to humble Paul. Now, let's just get practical on this. James chapter 1 says that we should count it pure joy whenever we face trials of various kinds because the testing of our faith produces endurance. And endurance leads to maturity, maturity to completeness, that we're, la we're lacking nothing. That's a paraphrase of that passage, James 1, 2 through 4. Romans chapter 5, verses 1 through 5, same idea. We're going to endure through suffering. That endurance leads to maturity and as we're being sanctified to the point of completeness. God uses pain in people's lives to keep them humble. God uses pain in people's lives so that we would need him in our moments of weakness. Because Jesus makes it very plain here. My grace is sufficient for you. My power, this is Jesus talking, his power, my power is made perfect in weakness. God moves through the weakness of human beings. We know this through the Proverbs. We know this through other multiple passages in the scripture. Pride, when pride is at the center of the human heart, God will not work there. He will not work in that or through that. He will work to diminish that, correct that, um, discipline that, however you want to say it. God will not use a prideful man. God will use a broken man. God will use a weak man in order to promote his gospel. His grace is sufficient. It's all we need. That's what the word sufficient means. We have everything we need wrapped up in his grace. Our pride, our boasting, there's no room for it in the work in the church. And I know that's a battle for each and every one of us to think more of ourselves than we ought. But today I want this to be a reminder. As Paul is writing this letter, correcting the Corinthians of their, I don't, I don't want to use the, the word I'm thinking of right now, correcting them of their lack of loyalty to Christ, their lack of loyalty to him as a shepherd. As you read through the rest of this passage, Paul's hurt. He's very hurt by these Corinthians. They call him a liar. But what does Paul do? He's, he's teaching. He's reminding them. God works through weakness. So I'm going to be weak among you. I'm not going to boast. I'm going to be weak. Even though I could boast, I'm not going to. I'm going to be weak. So remember that, Christian, as, as, we, as we go into our daily walks, and listen, we need to be reminded of this all the time. God resists the proud. And pride, pride can come in many different forms. But God resists pride. He, re, he resists the proud. He will not work through prideful people. He will discipline prideful people. He will silence prideful people. He will correct prideful people like he's doing here in 2 Corinthians. So 
we cannot boast in our church. We cannot boast in our knowledge. We cannot boast in um, any authority that we might hold. The only thing that we can boast in is Jesus Christ. Why? Because his grace is sufficient for us in and through our weakness. So I hope that's a good reminder for you. I know it is for me as I, as I was reading this today. It's like, that's right. I have to remember that. God will work through my weakness, not my strengths. Not my pride, I should say. He won't work through pride. He'll work through my weakness. And if, whether that's a physical weakness that he gives us, because we don't know what this thorn was, by the way. This thorn could have been, uh, Paul alludes in Galatians that he had really bad eyesight. So it could have been that, that, that somehow he had some kind of eye condition that brought him physical pain. Um, and we, we don't know. Or some people um, assume that maybe this was actually, because um, it says messenger of Satan, that this is actually a demon that was assigned to Paul to torment him. And so it was a spiritual torment. Maybe it was a combination of the two. We just don't know. We don't have enough information. And uh, maybe that's because God doesn't want us focusing on that um, because there's, we would. And uh, so we'll just take it, we'll take it at face value that, um, that there was a messenger of Satan there. And whether so whether that was physical or not, spiritual or not, is not the point. The point of that whole passage was not the thorn. The point of that passage is, is that God's grace is sufficient and he will move in those who are weak. So I hope that's a blessing to you today. It took a little bit longer today to get through this. Read through the rest of the passage. That outline that I gave you at the beginning should be helpful for you to think through. Um, how to how to process this passage. Also, if you don't have a good commentary, uh, get a good commentary. Warren Wiersbe's commentary on outline or outline commentary is good in the New Testament. What's it called? Wiersbe's New Testament outline. Um, that that's a good one to get. Uh, you can get something like the Holman's Bible Handbook. That that would be good. The Holman's Bible com New Testament commentary. There's lots of good um, entry level commentaries out there that will be helpful to kind of help you think through passages like this as you go through the, the daily word with us. Uh, thanks for joining me today. We'll see you guys tomorrow for 2 Corinthians chapter 13. We're going to land the plane tomorrow. Have a great day.